Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump Podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Welcome back, Peter. How are you feeling? Back. Oh yeah, hello. Thanks. I forgot about that. Yeah. I'm all right, thank you. Good. Good. Feeling a lot better. How are you guys? Good. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Bit happy tired. to see me. Yeah, I'm really happy to see you. Always good. happy really to happy see you. To see you. Bit Glad. tired? Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Yeah. And you had a fight with a man in a car. Last well, I night. didn't have a fight. I did a very, I did a very aggressive head head shake at him, like tut tut tut, because I was cycling and he pulled out at me. Yeah. And I had to go around him, and then he he said some expletives at me out of his car window, mm. and that only motivated me to cycle so hard. Yeah. Because yeah. I was cross. Yeah. So then I saw, I was like, How, who, does he, by who does he think he is? Before you knew, you were home. And yeah. I was home. I was straight back home. It was People great. should do that to you more often. Yeah. I know. If you see me quicker. in the street, tell me to go f myself. <laughs> Yeah. And I <laughs> cycle really hard. Uh, this morning, though, was a tough cycle because it's so bloody windy outside. Yeah, it's yeah, windy, it is really windy. Are we, is there meant to be a storm? Did I hear that? This is really boring, isn't always it? Always a storm. There's always a storm. It'll be letter E, won't it, this time? Yeah. yeah. Go through the alphabet. Edna, who do you think? Edith? Elliot. Is it a boy? Don't know. Babette I, was a girl, so D Kieran. was... We had Kieran. Kieran, so it'll be a man's name. Is, are we on E already? Did we have D? I don't know. I remember Storm Kieran. Was that the most recent? I think there oh, was yeah, one no. after that. Yeah, because it was Babette was, was before that. Yeah. yeah. So are we on D. We might be on D. D's. D's. D. No, I'm not going to. Denise. Do that. Denise. D's niece. Uh, thank you guys. That was a really fun conversation <laughs> yeah, we just had about no the problem. weather. I know what we could call it. Go on. Dead Island to the Spider. Oh, I'm looking round. I don't see it. Uh, in case you missed it, we did actually have a sponsored video, video from Dead Island 2, yeah, which fe feels like a full circle moment. Uh, mm. Go and watch that. All about their, still uh, clapping. their house DLC. <laughs> can't you stop. can't <laughs> stop saluting until we see the Yeah, man. I was just looking for him. Until we see our boy. He's not in here today, but, is he? Yeah. Dead Island 2, the spider. Might be too cold for them. Maybe they're in... Uh, do, do spiders hibernate? I, I feel know. like there are fewer spiders. They come inside normally in the winter, don't they? Yeah. There's a, a fresh clutch of baby spiders in oh. the hallway of my house. I don't mind. Where, you know, they just now. suddenly they appear. There's like one spider and then All of the them. next day there's, there's like six of them. Yeah. But there are just little money spiders. So I don't really... I'm not doing anything about them. <laughs> they're paying rent? Yeah. Well, they're money spiders. Yeah. So I should they hope will so. do, they, I'm sure. Yeah. This is a video game podcast, by the way. Uh, each and every week, we're sponsored by a very real video game adjacent sponsor. They help us keep the lights on here, help us, um, well, heat Dead Island to the spider. But clearly, he's been like mm. massively disrespected by yeah. the lack of heat, and he's gone somewhere. Yeah. We'll see him again, I'm sure, next year. Uh, I've got the ad read here. Mm -hmm. You've heard of the Game Awards. Get ready for the James Awards. <gasps> They're back! Presenting Check the James Awards 2023. I actually have the uh, nominees for Best James. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to hear them? Yeah. yeah. So we've got uh, Singer Song Man and actually Funny Twitter Man, James Blunt. Yeah. Right. One of the Jameses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got Slow Car Man, James May, mm -hmm. is also one of the nominees. Yeah. yeah. King James the First, off of the 17th century. Right. Yeah. He's the third nominee. Yeah. yeah. And finally, In Memoriam. Excited. No, he's still going strong. Oh, okay. <laughs> still kicking. Posthumous okay. award. Um, and in fourth, with the very, very exciting one for us, it's actually James Jenkins. James wow. and the Giant Peach. James, oh, Jenkins. James Jenkins. No, not no. Jan. He's, not he's up for best James. James Jenkins is up for best James at the James Awards. I don't like his odds against King James the First. Well, you know, was he, he the probably one... did some pretty cancellable stuff, didn't he? In I think James the First century. might have been the one what made the witch hunts a lot worse and said, oh. like, uh, they tried to kill me when I was on a ship. He was the first unified, according to Wikipedia, King of England and Scotland. Yes. Yeah. After was they he the one merged. that um, had lots of boyfriends? Don't know. Could have been. Probably a few of the those. The one in Doctor Who who's doing the witch hunts, he had boyfriends. I think that's, oh, that's James. Nice. It's one of the Jameses. I'll do a Google if you like yeah. while we... Uh, Good for him. We've got to get our facts right. Okay, yeah. so he yeah. might he might get the He might have been on the sense. homosexual... For having boyfriends, yeah. yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, I I think James Jenkins stands a great chance. He might have had boyfriends. We don't know James Jenkins has had. He's got white well, boyfriends. Yeah. That's very true. I'm not aware of any boyfriends no. James Jenkins has had. No. Um, but yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. He's got an interesting past. This uh, is true. International man of mystery James yeah Jenkins. yeah and he's very old so he could he's so old <laughs> uh, it wasn't until James the 6th oh James oh. the 6th the boyfriend's one I knew oh. it was a James is that first. James the 6th of England or James the 6th of Scotland oh because James the 1st of I... England was also James the Fifth of Scotland, oh maybe. My God. I'll tell you. History he was podcast. both. He was he was two James. James the sixth and first. Yeah. Okay, so it one. is that James. It was the right. Oh my God. There you go. We've done it. Uh, I mean, I kind of want this guy to win now the James Award. What instead of James Jenkins? Instead of James Jenkins, mm. because he's yeah. got he's so fascinating. But yeah. it's it's all about you know who deserves it, not who we want to win. Right. You well, know? you know, Jeff Keighley. Might. Vote for James Jenkins mm. is a vote for. Uh, um, uh, vaguely 
vaping. Vaping. He, he does loves vaping. love vaping. As one of his James Jenkins <laughs> might have had boyfriends is old and loves vaping. Yeah. Um, no, only only one of those things is true. Yeah. He loves vaping. It's vote for friendship. Yeah. Uh, yes. So on the seventh of December, we invite you to tune in to the James Awards, uh, hosted by Jeff Keighley, um, who will be going by James James Lee for the evening, uh, as sort of as a sign of respect, hoping that his friend. J Mayo Jamima <laughs> turns out. I, I know I'll be tuning in. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, the James Awards is not real, uh, oh. but James oh. Jenkins is James of the Year in our hearts. Always. Oh, James yeah. of the Year every Apart from actually this year, I kind of want to vote for King James. King the James first. the first and sixth <laughs> is, is our James of the Year. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not real. We are, of course, actually sponsored by a wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you support us there, you get access to a whole load of stuff, including asking questions on this podcast. But the $5 tier, that's where you want to go because you get access to early worst games ever, early weirdest games ever, exclusive access to future and past episodes while they've been going on there of Rules Boss and Main Menu. Uh, and there was an episode of Rules Boss a couple of weeks ago, Main Menu going out. First of December. Right. First of we, December, yeah. really soon. And it's, I think, the most disgusting episode oh, yeah. of Main Menu. It really is. Ever. <laughs> it's a 50-odd minute special yeah. as well. So patreon.com forward slash team yeah. triple jump. As well as that, you want to go to triplej.mup. That's our website. That's tripleju.mp. There you can find links to our YouTube, Twitch, Discord. If you want a cameo from us from for Christmas, you can do that. Uh, Twitch, we stream every single day of the week apart from the weekend. So come see us live or mm. go to the VODs channel after the fact link in the description yeah. the most exciting one we've got to talk about this week though is triplejumpshop.com where currently there is a Black Friday sale that I believe ends on the 3rd of December so you've still got a couple of weeks time it's 50% off everything on the shop Whoa. everything off the shop you want this hoodie <laughs> I'm wearing you want this logo slightly different logo shirt that I'm wearing you want that hoodie Ashton's wearing you want a slightly different hoodie that's slightly very different. similar to what Peter's wearing yeah 50% off all of it. The uh, the discount will be applied at the checkout, so you don't need to put any uh, any codes in. Tripplejumpshop.com. Christmas baubles still available Christmas on there. Baubles. Warm mm. winter hats. Mugs. Not sure Are what the... I feel like mugs. We had mugs, but I don't know if we still have mugs. Okay. I'm not sure what the delivery time is on Christmas baubles. I th I'd like to think if you buy one now-ish that it will arrive in time to put on your tree this year. I'm not making any guarantees. I don't <laughs> run the shop, but probably no. would. <laughs> Shrug. May as well give it a go. 50% yeah. mm -hmm. off until the 3rd of December. Go get yourself a bargain and help us clear out some old stock. <laughs> Triplejumpshop.com. Ben, <laughs> can't say it like that. We've got a couple of videos going out on the channel this week. Very exciting videos. We have. And new merch coming soon, by the way. Yes. Um, that won't be 50% off that, though. No, because it's fresh. <laughs> Not old and musty. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Oh uh, every Dungeons and Dragons game ranked from worst to best. So we've already ranked the companions from Baldur's Gate. Three, but this is every Dungeons and Dragons game ranked from worst to best. There are flipping laws of the man. Tons. Nearly two hours long, that video. <laughs> Son. It's also the worst Biker games Grove. ever week. Uh, these pair played Mortal Kombat Special Forces. Mm, yeah. Was it good? No. No. Seems uh, like ages ago. Well, it was yeah, a while we ago. We recorded it back to back, didn't we, with yeah. the last episode? Uh, yeah, so some exciting stuff out on the channel. Once again, patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. Give yourself a little festive treat this Christmas. Yeah. Sign up for a month and see what you can get your hands on, mm -hmm. including asking questions. Just like, just like Chris McVeigh, who says, Hi BAP, a bunch of news relating to games that recently turned 20 years old just happened to drop. We have conflicting reports about the status of Knights of the Old Republic remake. Is it still in production or not? Jason Schreier says yes. Yeah, he says mm. two people say yes. Yeah. Two uh, people are working on it. I yeah. I, yeah. But is it just two people working on it or yes. does it just happen to be that he spoke to two and they're like, oh, we are actually, yeah, still working Sometimes, on it. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Uh, news from Ubisoft or Ubisoft that development of the Prince of Persia Sons of Time remake has, quote, passed an important internal milestone, whatever that means. <laughs> and statements from the developers of The Simpsons Hit and Run that they like the rest of us don't know why there's never been a sequel they said there was a five game plan proposed to uh, the Vendi and they said no thanks uh, <laughs> combined with TP's well known frustration about the certain state the uncertain status of the Beyond Good and Evil series another game that just turned 20 this all has me wondering why mid generation PS2 slash Xbox games seem to have this coincidentally similar difficult legacy is it a 2003 problem or a 2023 problem that these games and franchises haven't had the modern treatment they prob probably deserve. 
Mm. Thank you, Chris. Good question. Thank you, Chris. I think it might be, in a way, a 2003 not problem, a 2003 um, opposite of problem, unproblem, in the sense that those <laughs> games, in in some ways, speaking very relatively, have aged quite well in, mm. in lots of cases. I mean, yeah, you sit down and you play Simpsons Hit and Run or something like that, you are going to notice a lot of things that haven't aged very well. But I think in the minds of a lot of people, they've aged well in a sort of slightly different way to other... So you can look back on a game that, that has been remastered, say, uh, the, the Crash Bandicoot trilogy, and you might think about that uh, in your mind as, oh, yeah, I really enjoyed that at the time. But I think people had a kind of a yearning to replay it in a new and updated form. Whereas I think a lot of these games that we're talking about here, Simpsons Hit and Run, uh, Prince of Persia, Sons of Time, Knights of the Old Republic even, you look, you can look back on those fondly and almost think like you would almost rather play it in its original form. Mm. I, I I kind of feel like there's kind of two ways of looking back on something that you enjoyed back in the day. And sometimes you're like, oh yeah, I'd love to see that again. And other times you can kind of feel more like I'd love to just have the hardware to play the original version. And so maybe there's a sense that games of a certain generation, and that might be the, the sort of the sweet spot or the opposite of the sweet spot, depending on which way you look at it, um, kind of almost say don't remaster me i was good as i was and you mm -hmm. should just play me as as i was if you really want to um i mean i i don't have any stats to back that up because i could quite happily say that i personally would play a remaster or a remake of sons of time i'm looking forward to obviously beyond good and evil might be getting some kind of anniversary edition now it's the old republic i was also quite keen to play because that one is i think one that maybe hasn't aged uh, quite so well in terms of its gameplay but uh, yeah i just kind of think that the there might be a, a kind of a quite a specific like lens that we look at that that little generation uh through that kind of makes you think they were good as they were or maybe makes developers think or publishers they were good as they were and we wouldn't necessarily do well to remaster them but i don't know that's just a it's just a theory mm. i also wonder how how much like the people who say like, oh, these need a remake are the, like just a vocal minority mm, as well. Because yeah. I think that like a lot of people, when you talk about remakes, we've talked about it a lot in this past year and a bit in the sense of like, we've, we've been like, oh my God, there's so many remakes coming out. It feels like we're not getting that many new games. We're getting a lot of remakes slash remasters. But also I think that most people just want like a new IP, mm. a new interesting thing that they can sink their teeth into that's not been done before. Like you said, there's, these games exist and are playable. And I think that that's probably part of it as well as a sense of like, and I won't say that it's not going to make any money because we know that they are going to yeah. make money. The Crash um, Insane Trilogy made a buttload of money and as do a lot of other remakes. But I do think that maybe it's just a matter of them not thinking that they're actually going to make that much money. And I'm not saying these communities are small, but I don't know if they're necessarily big enough to justify them sinking a lot of money into remastering or remaking them. Um, I think, like you say, KOTOR, um, these ones are very popular ones, but there are so many other games that people talk about getting a remake or a remaster. Um, not just these ones. These happen to be the ones that are like turning 20 this year. Mm. But um, yeah, I do think it's a shame that these games are not necessarily as accessible, especially things like KOTOR, which is famously inaccessible for a lot of, a lot of people. I would, um, yeah, it's a shame, but I do think it's maybe a matter of just not having the the market for them i mm. think potentially i i mean i'm inclined to agree actually i wonder if it's a case of publishers overestimating the popularity of some of these mm. ips mm. and in so doing underestimating the resources needed to bring them about and whether that be they give them to a studio that isn't necessarily up to the task, whether they did either they don't have a good track record or they're completely unproven. I believe um, citation needed the Prince of Persia, the Prince of Persia remake is being made maybe by Ub like an Indian studio in Ubisoft uh, within Ubisoft. That's I don't not think it is anymore. I think it has was, that changed now. It might have been moved. Mm, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I'll check that. Citation needed on that, but uh, th that's sort of my point is that yeah. that I, a lot of these games are potentially treated as kind of afterthoughts mm. by yeah. the publishers. They're like, yeah, okay, some people want this, so let's make it, but 
we don't want to spend a lot of money on it. Mm -hmm. So let's give it to a studio that probably won't do it justice. Yeah. And in this day and age where games are getting way more complicated, if you want to be taken seriously and not just mercilessly ridiculed in the you know the arena of public opinion, especially online, mm -hmm. then it has to look really good. And if you would, if you if it doesn't look really good, it's going to be mocked. If it if they change the art style, it's going to piss off all the fans yeah. of the original. Yeah. And so I think it may just, I don't think the year necessarily has anything to do with it. I think it's just sort of coincidental that a lot of games that are looked back on favorably, like we always talk about how nostalgia shifts as time goes by. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that a lot of adults currently with disposable income are very nostalgic for that period of time. So a number of games from that period are being remade. And I just, I think it's probably a case of publishers not necessarily taking it as seriously and not throwing as much money behind it as they should. Whether that's the studios they give it to are perfectly competent, like um, Michel Ancel was involved with Beyond Good yeah. Evil's new new game, um, and he then left. Uh, and so potentially it could go to a competent studio, but the money just isn't there. The funds aren't there to bring it to life. Mm. Or it could be that it goes to a studio that doesn't matter how much money they get, they're not going to do a good job. Or games are hard to make and sometimes it just goes wrong and, yeah. and it just yeah. doesn't come together. The people involved in making it fall out or there's creative differences and it, it could be one of many things. I think a good example that kind of combines all of our answers, albeit from a previous generation actually, is um, the Medieval remake, mm. uh, which had that like vocal minority or, or vocal community, however big it was, saying, love Medieval, can't wait for this remake. And looking at um, and all 10 of, of them bought it. Well, exactly. <laughs> looking at reaction rather than actual numbers, you know, looking at what people are saying rather than how many people are saying it, you might think that that would have gone absolutely wild when it came out, like your your insane trilogies and your hmm. reignited. But, um, and I'm not saying it, it failed that game, but no. it didn't take the world by storm when it came out. And there wasn't a whole new community of medieval players saying, wow, I've just discovered this game. It's great. I want Medieval 3 now. Um, it just, it did well enough in that audience. And I'm sure it probably made a bit of profit or whatever, but uh, it perhaps didn't go maybe the way that the publisher thought it would go. I yeah. think you have to have a very specific game. Like you have to pick what game you're going to remaster or remake very carefully, I think. Because like you say, the Insane Trilogy and the Reignite Trilogy, they did amazingly because they were games that had a fan following that was huge at the time and mm. still remained huge. And they're still appealing to, to people today. Exactly. Like new, newcomers. Exactly. Yeah. You have to pick whatever game you're going to remaster or mm. remake like very carefully because I I don't know if given the the opportunity if, that I would potentially purchase any of the remakes that we're talking about today because I, I one, don't have the nostalgia towards it and two, I'm not really interested in any of those franchises. I'd probably be most likely to pick up the Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, me too. But mm. purely out of a curiosity standpoint of whenever people talk about it, they say it's really good. I wouldn't necessarily as like a regular someone who's not like as into gaming right now as I am, I probably wouldn't have even mm. considered picking a lot it of these up. Games I don't know what it is. Probably should have a remaster, shouldn't they? And I think a lot of them have been sort of given given a bit of a spit yeah. shine yeah. and ported to, you know, yeah. last year. I mean, Night Sail Republic was compat ported to compatible. Switch like a little while ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't a very good. It one, wasn't good, but But that's probably like it's these some of these games definitely deserve more. Mm -hmm. But in terms of ticking that box of a publisher, like, okay, we hear you, you want this, and you will pay for it again, so here it is again, we've not done much to it, versus we're going to have to have an entire studio full of people paid for four or five years, potentially, to build this from the ground up. And the mm -hmm. reaction, un unless it's perfect, the reaction from fans and reviewers is going to be really negative, and yeah. there's a very small chance we're going to make our money back. Mm -hmm. Well, like you say, Ashton, in terms of you have to pick the right game. Like some games are dated simply because the, the sort of the technology is out of date. And and if the technology had been better, that game could have like really been taken to a, a, a somewhere further. But some are ga some games are dated because just at their very foundation, that kind of game doesn't work anymore. So your game, your, your crashes and your spiros still work today mm -hmm. because a lot of people still like three D platformers and and puzzles mm -hmm. puzzles in that sense. But you take I mean, I can't think of a good example off the top of my head, but you take 
some games where people are crying out for a remaster. And as you were saying, Ben, you don't then want to change the game too much. You can make it look as good as you want. But if at its very core, that style of gameplay just isn't popular anymore, mm. even though it was in the 90s or whatever, it's no matter how well you remake or remaster it, it might not have as much mass appeal if it's something that is just not the genre. Well, uh, it's like the want. Final Fantasy VII remakes. They're yeah. a complete shift from yeah. the original mm -hmm. outside of the odd, you know, of the characters, the story, and like a few bits and pieces that you can change. It's an entirely yeah. new game, an entirely new genre, basically. But like you said, that's one of the few games where they can, yeah. they know it's big enough yeah. that they could, exactly. they would, you know, it would still take the world by storm. People just it? want more They do. It. Um, Prince of Persia was originally with Ubisoft Mumbai and Ubisoft Pune, uh, and but was shifted to Montreal. Okay, recently. Mm. I see. Well, that's you know that that's exactly my point. Yeah, yeah. is that they just gave it to a studio that clearly wasn't up to the. Yeah, well, it's the, the same thing with uh, United States Republic. He was with Aspire, and now it's with Sabre. But it's because apparently Aspire showed uh, Lucas Films and. Marvel, who owns Star Wars? Disney, Disney probably. Disney. <laughs> Marvel was probably there, yeah. just having a look. Um, and they showed it them like their demo and apparently weren't impressed, so it just got taken off for them and given to someone else. Right. But that's the old, that's the embracer group way, isn't it? It is, you hear that they've probably canceled that their time splitters stuff that they were mm. working on. Oh, I didn't hear that. I hate it. Was this before oh, or after they sacked thing. a thousand people? Hmm? Was that before or after they sacked a thousand? I think people? it's a thousand. It's a thousand and counting, isn't yeah. it? It's still going on. They are. They. Oh, it makes me so cross. Anyway, mm. we're not here to talk about them. I think we should move on to a new section that we've never done before. Okay. Yeah, uh, brand new uh, and shiny. shiny. It's called uh, "What We Play In." Oh. It's what we play in time. Time to talk about the games, what we have been playing. Peter, mm. what have you been playing? I, uh, this week, have... It was funny, we got, got asked about question one and old PS2 games that may or may not have aged well. Uh, I hooked up with interesting hardware um, <laughs> my PS2 to my, my TV. Um, okay. I have played my uh, PS2 not so long ago on an older TV that uh, I no longer have. Uh, when I say not so long ago, it was like last year. Um, but uh, I, I've now got like a thing you put into the back of your PS2 mm -hmm. that then takes an HDMI out and then it goes around. But then to power that, it's USB powered. And I don't have any USB plug sockets near my TV. So I have my PS5 in rest mode. <laughs> And I had the power. Do you not have a USB converter. port on the back of your TV? No, I don't think I do. Ah. Um, not PS2 that I'm aware has of. USB ports as well, doesn't no, it? No, it doesn't. I thought it might it do. So I looked. I, I was like, oh, can I power this with its own thing? But maybe oh, like more recent models do. But my PS2 doesn't. Oh damn! I was looking, thinking, yeah, it it's must got have to. one. Yeah, yeah. I, I was watching does. Peter's video of the MacGyver situation. <laughs> that he's yeah, with. I had to have it like hanging off the TV stand so that the because of the way the thing comes out, I couldn't like have it flat. It would have been like. Mm -hmm. crushing itself and it, it wasn't it Damn. wasn't good but i've played loads now great past couple of days i posted the video yesterday but i've had the ps2 set up for a couple of days and uh you mentioned time splitters mm. played time splitters 3 i've been basically I've been playing the games that i can't get running smoothly on an emulator mm -hmm. okay um so i played some time splitters 3 which as you remember when we tried to emulate didn't go well the world wasn't visible for a lot of the game no. <laughs> um we still played through the whole thing though yeah we probably we managed have done it that. no yeah, um in hindsight i think it's probably not that difficult to fix now that we know about those emulators a bit more but mm. anyway um i played some soul caliber 2 i played some tech and tag uh, i played some burnout revenge and last night, uh, after playing some more Soul Calibur, I also played um, Star Wars Battlefront 2, the original, the PS2 version. Mm. And that game, again, making some allowances, has aged reasonably well. Mm. I mean, I used to really like the space levels, and they're a bit harder to play now um, in hindsight, or having, having, you know, flown a lot of current gen spaceships and things <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, with much better controls. It's now uh, it's kind of tricky flying flying those but um i've had a really good time and i think like they, they made a really good campaign with what they had yeah. you know basically just bolting together quite simple objective types blow this thing up pick up this item bonus to activated base. yeah but uh <laughs> you know and it's all voiced by tamara morrison so you know i'm having a good time with that and i'm probably gonna play it all the way through so i've not played anything recent uh this week but i've played quite a lot of old stuff Stuff. And I've had a really mm. nice time. Fantastic. Lovely. Mm. 
I've played two things this week. One that I'll talk about now, and one I'm going to talk about in Review Corner in just a minute. Oh. Um, I jumped into Alan Wake last Thursday after the podcast. Amazing. Um, I said, I was like, I need to play it. And then I just downloaded it while I was at work. And uh, yeah, I, gave, I jumped into it. I think I've played, ooh, I've played through chapter one and two and maybe three as well. I can't quite remember if I got to chapter four or not. But um, yeah, I've been enjoying it. And it's spooky. Mm. And uh, I'm playing it on the easiest mode because... I'm a baby, and mm -hmm. that's how I want to play the game. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by it so far. I obviously kind of know what the story is from like lists and stuff. Where we've talked about Alan Wake, so I kind of know what's going on. Um, and I do think that if I didn't know what's going on, I'd be like trying to solve the mystery. But because I do kind of know what's going on, I'm like, oh, okay, so that makes sense because I know this. Um, but I have been enjoying it so far, so hopefully I'll jump back into that once I finish the game. Then I'm going to talk about review corner. So. Well, hopefully you know what's going on at the end of it because that's one thing I've seen is that like people mm. have said, oh, I had a really really good time with it. It was like surprisingly good, but I came away from it thinking what or like there's kind mm. of like loose threads or you know mm. something like that i feel a bit lost by alan wake and control to be honest like yeah it's it's, it's a bit too esoteric for me yeah uh, and th that doesn't mean i don't want to try i've watched a lot of like videos on youtube about what endings mean and stuff mm. but it's like i just i do there's too go, much going on here i walked away from control like mm. i enjoyed myself but i don't know what was what happened mm -hmm. Yeah. Why was it go? Why was this happening? I also completely forgot that Alan Wake Two didn't get a physical release because yeah. I, I oh. was I was gonna ask for it for quiz for Christmas. For Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. I am ten years old. <laughs> uh, I was gonna ask for it for Christmas, and um, yeah, it doesn't exist on any oh, stuff, any shops. Don't think I knew that. So uh, yeah, eventually no, I'll I'll, I'll I'll get around to that. And I was also kind of surprised by the discrepancy or the difference in review scores because I heard that this was you know. By all accounts, an amazing game, mm. and is, it stands a very good chance of winning Game of the Year. And obviously, review scores ultimately don't mean an awful lot, no. but also they do. And it's on something like a ninety-four on Xbox, which is what I thought. And then it's on an eighty-nine on yeah. PS Five. Oh. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if it just performs worse, or if and there it, were but just it's less more, on PC as well. Yeah, maybe more people reviewed well, it. On yeah, PS Five has like sixty reviews, and the Xbox I think has like fifteen. Okay, so mm. it might be just that the yeah. average is dragged up. Yeah. See, that's I find that's that very exactly interesting. The same conversation it completely I had the other day. changes the narrative of mm. the. Yeah. Of the context of, of the, you know, you'd like to think an reception. average would account for that's the All kind of the point of an yeah. average is yeah. like, no matter how many people do it, it I mean, it, the more the better, obviously. Yeah. But uh, even yeah. so, it'll probably, you know, still be in the, the low 90s, mm. you know, 90s. Mm. It's still an exceptional game. I just, yeah. I wasn't aware that there was such a difference on the yeah, platform. That's um, so I'm looking forward to playing that, though. I'm, yeah. I'm, I am interested in hearing how you find it as you play more. Thank mm. you. <laughs> I uh, decided to go to Peter's house and then say, you know what, this is too far back in time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip three years into the future uh, to 2006 and I am playing Oblivion. Yeah. I'm still oh, playing yeah. Oblivion. <laughs> you know this, Peter, because obviously you listen to the podcast every week. Yeah. And uh, last week I said that I've given up on Starfield, but uh, that it because because it sort of just felt like a game from 15 years ago mm. and then decided to play the game from 15 years ago. So I've still been playing a lot of Oblivion. I'm having a wonderful time in Oblivion. I am now the Grey Fox. I'm the, the head of the Thieves Guild. Mm -hmm. I am uh, the Arena Grand Champion. <gasps> So I'm standing gonna... right next to me, I killed that man, right? Yeah. I killed the adoring fan, mm -hmm. and then he showed up again later on. Oh my god, I don't know what happened. Oh Maybe at some point I must have reloaded the save. Did perhaps. you kill him before you were grand champion? No, oh. Maybe he was mm -hmm. reignited with you with his love for you. Potentially, yeah. I yeah. told him to wait by the waterfront, and that's where he lives now. Yeah, so he's still living there because I was trying to do Thieves Guild stuff, and he was walking around with a torch. Why, you know, by a bias, <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone. Um, and also, I'm uh, no big deal. I'm the champion of Cyrodiil as well. Whoa. Wow. So I have technically saved the world. And, they all sing in uh, that song now. He looked up at Dagon and cursed his foul name. I haven't actually heard this song. They all song. sing songs about you when you... Uh... Oh uh, what I do love, though, is the typical Bethesda dissonance between, uh, what is it, champion? And then... Stop, vile! Yeah. <laughs> like I, they want to send me to prison for a five gold bounty because mm. I picked up an apple. Like, yeah. hang on, this can be explained away. Aren't my immense and innumerable accomplishments enough to yeah. let me off? Mm. Hey, that's that's using your privilege for bad. Yeah, but to be fair, I do steal every food ingredient I find to make potions. So uh, right. uh, you know, I've stolen a lot of food <laughs> for my own, and then just sold the potions, which I believe 
is uh, what's that called? It's uh, money laundering. I was going to say it? money it's, laundering. It's laundering stolen goods into yeah. legitimate goods mm. to, yeah. to sell. Uh, so I've got more money than I can possibly use. And uh, now I'm just about to embark on uh, killing loads of people in the Dark Brotherhood. That's my next. Lovely. That's my next challenge. I Oblivion. I'd like to replay Oblivion at some point soon. Playing it on Series X is fantastic because the game's only like seven gigabytes and everything loads immediately. Well, I'm going to. It gonna, runs brilliantly as I'm well. I'm going to buy one for myself as a Black Friday Christmas You're going to get yourself a Series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Have you still got your... I was interested, actually, in whether or not you still had your Game Pass subscription from no, PC. I, so I, I just got a month's worth, to, yeah. and I played Starfield, and I was like, mm, not for me. And then at, I was thinking, at the time, I didn't really have the time to play more stuff on PC mm -hmm. there and then. So I was like, I'm going to cancel it for now. But while I was on it, I'd been looking through the library thinking like, okay, I, I need to get an Xbox now. Got to play all your Bethesda games. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that is partly why I'm going to get one for uh, as a treat. A Excellent. Present. Well, those yeah. uh, those 360-era Bethesda RPGs run so well. Yeah. It's really nice. And uh, the quick resume as well, fantastic. Big fan of that. Mm -hmm. So having a great time. Uh, I'm just sort of... There, I feel like there's a, a thousand other games I should be playing right now, but nothing new is coming out supposedly hopefully yeah well so, that's not true I need to play you got like two day. weeks until that avatar games come oh, out. i don't yeah. care about the avatar <laughs> game i couldn't give less of a toot I about you, the avatar why game. do i think you were excited about it why would you think that i don't know it's far cry which i don't like yeah and avatar which i'm also completely not indifferent by. about yeah yeah i was like it is it fraser I bet Fraser likes. I bet yeah, Fraser probably, probably likes. Fraser loves it. The thing is, I know that if I if I started playing it, I'd probably really enjoy You'll it. Much like it. Far Cry Six and Saints Row. Just take over your life. Yeah. Is it co-op? Don't know. I don't know. Because if it's just Far Cry, then you you know. I two, was on the fence balls. about it, and then they. Two blue, I think it's two blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> two blue. <laughs> it's like what? Just a couple of blue balls. Just blue balled. Uh, I was indifferent about it as well. And then um, they posted a tweet yesterday of like one of my least favorite tropes in fiction, which is the, it takes a long, you, uh, it, it, it's wonderful to ride on the back of a flipping duck thing. Bird. Yeah. <laughs> but first you must earn its trust. And I hate the, oh, you know, the going through, yeah, all that. And then like, oh, he falls off it. Chill out, Chris Pratt. And then he's like sitting at night time, like looking at them flying around. <laughs> and then the next day on trial day where yeah. everyone has to prove themselves it's like so overdone mm -hmm. and if i have to do that in the game i'm gonna be turning off instantly if their next tweet was uh hey buy this and we'll we'll make that beyond good and evil game if you don't we're killing it <laughs> then if I'd, you don't we'll kill I'd michelle go through, the, the, through the trial of the ducks yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. The duck trial. plug your ponytail into yeah. its ponytail Stupid franchise. What was Cameron thinking? He's a lunatic. I oh, know, and now we've got three stopped. more of them films. Oh my <laughs> God, I don't care. The last one was torturous. Why did so many people, including me, go and see it? I don't understand. Don't I know. sent it my boyfriend with my dad money. because me and my so mum did not money. want to go. We were like, oh, you guys It was the longest film I've ever seen. <laughs> he was making another one at the same time. Like number three is basically done, I think. Oh, okay. Anyway. Um, Enough about that. So Oblivion. Yeah. I'm obsessed with Oblivion and I'm going to try and do all the guilds and then I'm done. <laughs> Yeah. We'll see though. It's time to hop into that review corner, Ashton. Oh, lovely. Oh. We're over here in review corner now to yeah. talk about a game yes. and do a mini review first impressions on it. Ashton Matthews, you've been playing a game. I have. I've been playing Super Mario RPG. Mm -hmm. It's the remake. And before we get started, per ASA guidelines, mm. we need to say this is technically an ad. However, no money was exchanged in order to cover the game. We were just sent a code by Nintendo. So thank you so much, Nintendo, for the code. Um, yes, I've been playing this game this week. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure if it was going to be my thing because yeah. I'm not typically an RPG gal mm -hmm. um, or a turn-based combat kind of person. But actually, I've really enjoyed it. Ah, um, it is. The art style is really nice it is, and it's I've very cute it, yeah. and it's just very it's very nice to look at. The music's great. You can choose between uh, an updated modern version of the music oh, or yeah. you can pick the original version of the music I if you that. are so inclined. Yeah. Um, but for those of you who don't know, you follow Mario, who has typically gone to find Peach, who's been kidnapped by Bowser. However, as he gets to rescuing Peach and defeating Bowser, a big sword crashes through the sky and straight into Bowser's keep. Ooh. And it kicks them all out to various places around the world. Um, it also destroys the star path, which is like how all 
wishes are granted right. and that sends out a bunch of stars into the world. Mm -hmm. So then you play as Mario and friends such as Mallow, who's this like cloud guy who thinks he's a frog. Okay. Uh, and then there's a character called Gino, who I had seen like <laughs> about, Gino. Yeah. If his grandmother had wheels. He, yeah, it would have been about. Like, yeah. Um I don't know if it's Gino or Geno, but right. it's G E N O. Oh right, okay. I would go with Gino, mm -hmm. but yeah, who is a a, a little doll a wooden doll has been brought to life and it's like on a mission to find all the stars okay um and there's also a character that people keep kept being like oh i can't wait to see gino in smash bros and why would gino be in smash bros i don't know anyway right. but gino's in rpg okay. i thought smash bros aren't adding any more characters they're not though. but oh, they, they were one like of the ones that they were like oh hope he's gonna be added right but he wasn't mm. um but yeah basically you go through various locations um there's like the odd kind of like hub where you can get more items you can go for a nap and normally that's kind of like where the base of this next mission is going to get started right um but yeah it's really cute and it's good fun and it plays really well the loading screens aren't too long mm -hmm. um i think it's kind of like the perfect the perfect switch game i would say like it's right. easy enough to put pick up and play handheld but it definitely works really well on like tv mode as well okay um when you're like navigating around the world mm -hmm. are you always playing as mario or do you like switch between yeah there? so right. okay. you play as mario so basically it's like mario absorbs everyone else they okay. kind of just like phase into him right. and then you're running around as mario and occasionally they'll hop out to talk to you mm -hmm. but then when you're fighting you can have up to two companions yeah. with mario at okay. any given time so there's four to choose from um there's Ma Mallow, Gino, Bowser, and Peach are your four okay. companions who you gradually get as the story goes on. No Luigi. Uh, no Luigi's oh. not in it. He's not. Um, and yeah, so you pick between them. They all have different abilities. Obviously, like Peach is more of a healer. Right. And then um, you can equip them with various weapons and like rings and stuff to like give them buffs in various ways. Mm -hmm. One of them might be like, oh, you go into an area and it'll tell you if there's like a secret treasure that's hidden there somewhere. Right. Or one of them is you can't get turned into scarecrows, kind of random things like that. Okay. Um, but you can get all the new weapons and stuff and um, armor as you go through in various locations. Obviously it gets increasingly better depending on where you're going. Um, but yeah, it's fun. I would say that like I'm, and it might be a me problem, but it kind of relies a little bit on timing as well. So when you send one of your guys over to hit someone, you have to time it correctly to press A again to get like a critical hit. Oh, okay. However, with each weapon change, I think it becomes, I don't know, not all the time, but it gets, it's harder sometimes to differentiate when you're supposed to press the button than it is with other weapons. Mm -hmm. Like you can kind of tell, okay, when Mallow's done one punch, you have to press it again before he does a second punch right. and then you'll get the boost. But sometimes it's like, am I supposed to press the button as he starts swinging or as he starts hitting? Like yeah. it kind of, I've struggled a little bit with that element of it in terms of like move, changing the way I'm interacting with with enemies and weapons depending on which one I've got equipped mm -hmm. um, and then there's like a gauge that you fill up and the more like perfect timing you do so you can like block with the kind of block critical critical hits as well with pressing A and again I can't always tell when an enemy is going to hit me yeah. or when I'm supposed to press it so sometimes I do take more damage than others because I'm like when when am I supposed to press this um, but if you fill up your gauge you get like a triple action which means that the three characters depending on the combination of the three mm -hmm. um, do various different things so if you get Bowser, Peach and Mario you do like a big kind of like attack mm -hmm. um, if you've got Peach, Mallow, and Mario, you do kind of like a healing ability where everyone gets cleansed oh, okay. and stuff. So there's various ways of playing it, and depending on how you like to play your games, you can kind of fix your team that way. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, if you, one of your characters gets knocked down, as long as you've got another character in the bank, you can switch them out. Right. So you can tend to have three at a go at any given time okay. on your squad. Um, but yeah, that's basically the premise and what's happening. But having not played the original, obviously, I don't know how different it plays. But from yeah. what I've seen online, the general discussion is that it's very, very similar in yeah, terms of everything. Yeah, yeah, it just looks very good mm -hmm. and it's, it plays really well. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're ever a fan of the original or you like the look of it. Um, I don't think it's going to be ver too long. I think I'm about halfway through it now. And like I said, I'm enjoying it. There's very di various different areas that kind of present different challenges. Mm -hmm. so it's like a, at one point, there's like a main 
maze that you're kind of trying to go through. That I did not understand at all. Like you have to follow Gino through this maze to try and catch him. But every time you go, you're kind of going in a circle, you end up in the same area. Right. And I was like, why can I not catch him? Like, I feel like I'm just following him around. And yeah. when I was trying to like outsmart him by going, right, well, he's going to come in this way to this next place. So I'll go back the other way. I was just not doing it. So I had to Google that a few times. Yeah, is and there like a trick to it? or There is, but it it kind of like you uh, maybe I was overcomplicating it like I was trying to figure it out but I thought I'd done what the answer actually right. was but it turns out I hadn't like you have to basically like follow him for a bit longer than I was but I kept being like well he's just going in a circle yeah, so yeah. surely I have to stop him going in a circle um, and also I had to google the uh, the hidden treasure locations because it doesn't tell so when you go into a room it's like there's a hidden treasure nearby but it doesn't like get louder if you like get mm. closer to any areas or anything um, and my uh, my only other complaint about the game is that typical Nintendo fashion, there's no voice acting. Right, yeah. And I do sometimes feel like it's missing it. Like it doesn't yeah. feel quite correct that there's none there. Like there's a cutscene quite early on where Mallow is like chasing after someone and it's a just a regular cutscene and the text at the bottom, I'm like, it really feels like someone should be talking here. Like yeah. when they're having discussions kind of out and about, obviously you don't need the, the toad NPCs having voice acting yeah. but on the cutscenes I'm kind of I feel myself missing it and like yeah especially nowadays yeah you know I guess it's easy to it's, I guess some people would justify it with you know presumably there wasn't voice acting in the original mm. and oh well it's true to the original but that was partly because you know there are hardware limitations that you're dealing with there and yeah. nowadays it, it would not cost them any more really to have voice so, yeah. cutscenes. Exactly. That's the kind of the only I think jarring thing where I've been like, oh, why the hell there's no voice acting here? Yeah. But everything else I've really enjoyed about it and I think that it's a pretty fun game fans of of our mustachioed plumber friend. Yeah. Um and definitely worth checking out if you if you're looking for any Mario game. If you've just finished Wonder and you're like, yeah. what do I do next? Need more Mario. RPGs right here. Yeah. Oh well, very good. And presumably exclusive to Switch. Can't yes. It's anywhere else. No, yeah. it's just on Switch. Uh brilliant. Well, thanks Ashton. No for problem. That. Should we go back to the regular podcast now? Yeah. It's time now for question two. Two. Which um kind of comes from Vartek because Vartek submitted the information but they didn't answer ask a question so I've Bartek, just added a question. Bartek, you've got to question ask a question next time. just sent a link to a, rele- a very relevant story. Yeah. yeah, and we were like, we want to talk about this so I added a question. Um, Bap, you won't... Oh my God, my jaw clicked. I hope you did not hear that. <laughs> it was very loud. <laughs> Bap. Um, you won't believe it. After taking a look at the PlayStation Store prices, Sony allegedly was charging a 30% commission on every purchase. Big L if true. Are you surprised by the accusations leveled at Sony? So is that your voice? Have you written that? No. Oh, no, he no, did no, the no, big no. L if to, true. To the heart, that's Bartek. And then I asked Oh, but the question. there was no que- Oh, I thought you meant he literally wrote no, nothing no, no, at no, all. No, 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 no. He wrote that little okay. bit, but there was no question. <laughs> no question. So oh, I right. We question. need a question next time, Bartek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask for that. I didn't just read out what I wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, I thought you'd like put your own spin on it. No, no, no. Very quickly, though. You won't believe it. Everyone charges a 30% commission on every purchase. Yeah. That's that's mm. not that's an industry standard. So yeah. big L for everybody, just just in case you weren't yeah. aware. Should I tell you what this is all about? Yes, please. Yes, please. Um so this this article will be in the link dump down below. Um a class action lawsuit accuses Sony of overcharging PlayStation Store customers by up to five billion pounds, six point two seven billion dollars, um, can proceed to trial. The UK Specialist Competition Court has ruled. The lawsuit was filed in August twenty. 22 by consumer rights campaigner Alex Neal on behalf of 8.9 million PlayStation customers. I remember us talking vaguely about this when it happened, yeah. but it was not really, no one knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, it alleges that Sony abuses its dominant position in the market by charging excessive PlayStation store price. The Japanese company uses its near monopoly on the sale of digital games and add-on content for PlayStation consoles to enforce strict terms and conditions on game developers and publishers, it argues. According to the suit, the t- these terms enable the company to dictate the price of digital content and charge a 30% commission on every purchase, which results in excessive and unfair prices to consumers that are out of proportion to the cost of Sony providing these services to its customers. Sony has sought to quash the suit, arguing the case was flawed from start to finish. But on Tuesday, the UK's competition appeal tribunal granted class representative Neil approval to go to trial with the claim against a Japanese company. This is a quote from Neil slash, what's his first name? Her name. Alex. Alex, sorry. Sorry, Alex. Um, They said, where has it gone now? 
This is the first step in ensuring consumers get back what they're owed as a result of Sony breaking the law. PlayStation gamers' loyalty has been taken advantage of by Sony, who have been charging them excessive prices for years. It is a significant... It is significant that the competition court has recognised Sony must explain its actions by ordering them to trial. With the action, we are seeking to put a stop to its unlawful conduct and ensure that customers are compensated. Um, anyone who lived in the UK and bought games on DLC, DLC through the PlayStation Store between August 19th, 19th 2016 and August 19th, 2022, unless they choose to opt out, they will uh, they will receive an estimated, but it would be, be between, be between sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, £67 <gasps> and 562 pounds in damages plus interest take them for everything plus they're worth interest. yeah the case which Let's may go. take several years to reach inclusions being paid for by a third party litigation funder and through conditional fee agreements with legal advisors so yes now we've talked about this before mm. um i think we talked about it when it first happened and i feel like we talked about it a little while ago like a few months ago in terms of the the actual amounts that were kind of coming out of this conversation may have been a weird mm. news at the time um but yes they are being sued of sorts. Susan, Susan about uh, the how much they charge in their digital storefront. Mm. Peter, what what do you think of this? Well, so this is I don't know if it's like Stockholm syndrome, and I don't remember what we took what we said or what I said last time we talked about this. Mm. But like, I mean, I, I'm sure there's no smoke without fire, and there must be a case here. But I also don't feel like I've been particularly being ripped off by Sony compared to what Xbox. Uh, players have been paying or right? Nintendo or Nintendo mm -hmm. yeah so there must be something going on here where someone's looking at all the numbers and some numbers that I guess aren't super front facing you know little bits of like well I don't I don't I don't know I do not understand but <laughs> apparently we've been being charged too much and and it could buy us a holiday. It yeah. Could. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the interesting thing. Like, I I just think like th there must be something going on here for it to not only have been brought up in the first place, but to have been approved to actually go to court. Mm. There's a couple of points that I've read online, right, that may explain this. I mean, firstly, obviously, if you're the big dominant dog in the business, you set the prices. You well, you do set the prices, and also that's who people are going to go after. Yeah. yeah. Secondly. Uh, is that apparently third-party officially licensed resellers of game codes are allowed on Xbox and uh, Nintendo storefronts, mm. but not on PlayStation, which effectively locks consumers into having to pay the prices they set with no option to get a cheaper right. deal yeah. elsewhere. But that was a that was something that I was unaware of, but that is a point that I've seen made online that Sony really do, as well as being, you know, as I said, if anyone's going to get gone after for the 30% thing it's Sony because mm. they make the most money from this stuff mm. um, there's also that aspect as well right see that makes a bit more sense because as you say the 30% thing applies across the board it does so yeah all right maybe go after Sony because they're the they're the big dog but everyone's doing it um, but that that is an interesting point I'd, I'd not really I remember thinking this like a year or so ago I was like looking to buy a game a physical copy and um, I, I couldn't really find whatever it was I was looking for anywhere other than like very official channels. It might have only been available uh, from PlayStation or or maybe mm. like just a couple of big other providers. Um, and I was thinking, yeah, there was a time, wasn't there, where you could just sort of find stuff all over the place for like mm. quite wildly varying prices uh, at times. And um, that, that does make a bit more sense if PlayStation are not allowing third party uh, companies to undercut them. Mm. Um, yeah, that I'm sure there probably is a case there to say, hey, look, you can't just say, no, you're not allowed to all do this for cheaper. We're going to be the only ones and we're going to charge this higher amount. Mm. Um, so yeah, if, if that's partly the basis of this, I can understand that. Yeah, I think that I would have been less, and I don't think surprised is the word because I don't feel surprised that much, but like I would have been like, oh, okay, that makes sense more so if it was Nintendo. Purely out of a sense of like, I feel like whenever you buy something on the Nintendo eShop, it is literally always full price. Like mm, it's right. never any less than like what it came out with on day one. Like I feel like you, the odd sale and it'll be like 10% off and it's still like 60 quid. And I'm like, what is happening here? Mm -hmm. um, and I do feel like that is the the only thing that I would have been like, well, it makes sense because Nintendo's stuff's always expensive. Always um, has been. Always mm -hmm. has been. Um, but yeah, the fact that you can't buy 
PlayStation stuff outside of official channels, especially digital content. Like you can't get keys anywhere else. Um, I think that is the that's the thing that is a little bit sus about what Sony do in the sense, that, which is exactly why the lawsuit is happening. In the sense that consumers are stuck in terms of who they can buy from, and Sony have set the prices for all of their games, and unfortunately. Their prices seem to keep following suit everywhere else. I don't know who was the first one to put the game up to be the games up to be like 70, 80 quid. But from memory, I think it was Sony. Sony and 2K. Um think, yeah. exactly with their first sort of set of PlayStation 5 games came out looking around 70, 70 quid minimum. Um and then very quickly afterwards it felt like we were going, Oh, this game's also 70 pounds. Oh, this game is also 70 pounds from everywhere else now we're used to it. yeah so we are we definitely have a bit of a consumer stockholm syndrome um and we've talked about that before in the sense of games are just going to keep getting more expensive because people are just gonna and i think we talked about this exact same conversation about the 30 percent um can like take from sony mm. in the sense that game developers will put their prices up for games on these platforms because they make less money because of the chunk that Sony take from them. Um, so yeah, I think that in general, it will be interesting to see if this goes anywhere. Again, it's going to take sig a significant amount of time for this yeah, to ever actually go anywhere. But hey, maybe one day in the distant, far off future, we'll all get five hundred pounds to pay for a lovely holiday, nice. or it'll go half towards Sony's next console that they release. Yeah, true. So. You know, the £1,000 console we yeah. all end up buying next. Yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, I've, I've read lots of different opinions about this mm -hmm. because obviously people are going to defend the, the multi-billion dollar company yeah. Yeah, because they have to. Uh, the argument set out by um, is it Alex Neal yes. uh, definitely invokes a lot of the the, the cost of living situation mm -hmm. and, you know, inflation and stuff like that, to which there is a relatively fair rebuttal, I think, which is that video games are not essential yeah. and they are very much a luxury good yeah. mm -hmm. and that you can wait for a sale or, you know, just not buy the game. You don't, you, you literally do not have to do this if you don't want to. I've even somehow seen some people defending the 70 pound price tag as justifiable, which I still find very hard to mm -hmm. believe personally. Um, and then of course, on the other hand, it's a massive corporation being sued on behalf of consumers and you stand to make some money from it. Mm -hmm. So how on earth could you not want that to go through so you can get a bit of money back? And also just think of the precedent that could be set because yeah. I think everyone on this planet who plays video games can agree that there has to be less production cost when releasing a digital product to a consumer versus a physical product. You've got the manufacturing, you've got the the shelf space, you've got the, sh the shipping, the distribution, yeah. you've got all that kind of stuff. There is no reason why a digital version of the of a game should cost the same as a physical version, especially but when physical versions are often discounted faster than digital ones. I would say that I agree with you. Mm -hmm. However, I appreciate that digital and physical versions are the same on behalf of a high street retailer who will go out of business and will be purely online if every single game that's coming out is yeah. cheaper to get yeah, that's online. True. I know that, but yeah. also it still doesn't make sense. No, I agree with you. But there will be damage done if if it's cheaper digitally, but it should be cheaper digitally. It yeah. should. Like I agree. It, it just should be. And if you stand to get some money back from it, what's what's the harm mm. you know quite frankly i think that I, I i really hope this goes through not because i personally feel that i've been ripped off like you said because it is just it is what it is it's video games and it's an expensive hobby and this is just the way the industry has been going for a long time and mm -hmm. we've been riding this wave with it for years and years and years it doesn't necessarily have to be this way if it never changed it you know it would be no skin off my nose because that's just how it's always been but if it could change, and if I could get some money back, then yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Thank mm. you very much. Uh, so, as you said, Ashton, this is going to take a long, old time. Yes. It is. It's yeah. going to rumble on in the background for, for, for a while yet. So That's we what we see. need, isn't it? A new lawsuit in the yeah, EU. Yeah, you know what's such a good point? <sighs> yeah. What else yeah. are we going to talk about now that Microsoft has approved the. EU Activision's has approved done? the. No, this is purely a UK thing at the moment, isn't I it? I do but feel like we're trying to make through, enemies, don't you? What's that? Just the UK. UK yeah. We're, we've like, uh, we upset Microsoft and we were like, yeah. You're, we don't like your deal. And they said, What if we just turned off Windows in the UK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, now it's like we're going for Sony. And I'm just, I'm worried. I'm worried that we're going to get isolated on this island. Uh, as, from if, video as if games. we're legging our games yeah, yeah, yeah. and pouring yeah. them in yeah. <laughs> secretly. And they'll all be kind of slightly off brand. Like, yeah. 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 The lost of us. Yeah. Et cetera. Exactly. Uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, this is just a UK thing. But if it does go through, then you bet your bottom dollar similar things will be popping up all over the world in different mm -hmm. markets. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Now, though, it's time for something a little bit strange. A little bit peculiar. And it's in the news. It's weird news. It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. Remember, you can submit weird video game news to us in the relevant social media post that goes out on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, and uh, if you want to guarantee a shout out in this section, however, you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump supporters at the appropriate tier and become a podcast producer just like G.Y. Goliath, Nicole Hansen, Duncan Wilson, Katie, oh, I've forgotten, Jared, Hardy, Garrett. Hard Garrett. Uh, Eric Siu. Potato Shack 99. Melody L. Bonnet. Nexus Polaris. Gabrielle Philippine. Blake Thomas. Janet Wiggs. And Great Giggity. Thank, Thank you, podcast, podcast producers. Producers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've got some weird news, Peter. Yes, it's from Aaron Akaski at Aaron Pristelski on Twitter. Whoa. Confusing. Cool. Um, but here we go. It's from thegamer.com, written by Rhiannon Bevan. Smother your food in the Street Fighter Gang's sauces. Oh, uh, no, no thank, you. thank you. Subheading, ever wanted to know what Ryu tastes like? Now you can, apparently, with this range of Street Fighter hot sauces. Brilliant. Is it going to be in Japan? It's always in Japan. Could be. Who do you think would taste the best out of the Street Fighter 2 roster? Well, wonder no more, because apparently we're about to find out. A range of Street Fighter hot sauces are going on sale in stores across the UK. Wow. I was wrong. Blimey. It's us. We're the problem. With each flavor based on a different character. From Ryu's Dragon Blaze to Chun-Li's Spinning Tornado, there's a range of flavors to choose from and all take inspiration from their character's moveset. Admittedly, we've got no idea if they taste any good or not, but with the sauces popping up in HMV stores around the country. Oh, are we going to have to go to a HMV? We're going to have to find one that's still open. Yeah. yeah. Expect to see this as a stocking filler if your family knows you've played Street Fighter before. Uh, right. and then there's then a tweet saying Street Fighter hot sauces are now a How thing. How many are there? Loads. <laughs> oh my god One, there two, are loads three four five six seven eight nine nine i don't know if that's are they on as sale many characters now? as there are does it say well i'll let you know thank you as well as coming in different flavors <laughs> each sauce has its own spice level being a wimp it looks like the only one i might have a good time with is dal sims mystic serenity which appears to be of a medium spice level hmm. on the other end of the scale we have blanca's electric firestorm which would probably <laughs> knock me on my ass faster than any of the characters could <laughs> there are nine flavors altogether which can be bought separately at six pounds a pop or in gift six pounds each yeah or in gift packs of three at 15 pounds Bargain. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to find out if they're... I we have to get these. We have to get them and use them for a video or something. We? I think they're out now. If we play Street Fighter and every time you get uh, knocked out, you have to try a new hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> if we didn't have a stream today, we could go to HMV. We yeah. could um, Maybe we could try and make them in main menu. Oh, make our Christ. own Street Fighter hot sauces. Oh. If your local <laughs> HMV has gone the way of so many and closed its doors, you can pick up the sauces online. Oh. Well, that saves us a trip, doesn't Who it? Who knows? Maybe come Christmas Day, you'll be lathering your turkey in reused juices. No! Or Rubbish. Maybe, or maybe not, because I have no idea if turkey goes well with hot sauce. Again, though, it would be memorable. Well, there you go. It then tells us what Street Fighter is and tells us what the Game Awards is. What is it? Is. What's the Street Fighter? What, what is, is it, that? Peter? How does that work? Street Fighter Six was a huge success this year and has been nominated for Best Fighting Game at the Game Awards. Wow. Great. Uh, it bagged three nominations in total and is also up for Best Multiplayer. What's a Game Award? And <laughs> is it like the, the James Awards? Yeah. yeah. It is a bit like that. Okay. Um, there we go. That's it. Wow. Brilliant. Thank Very you. Very weird. Mm. We got Ashton. Um, I have a news that wasn't technically submitted, um, but it was a question we got on the pod on the podcast question uh, post yeah. from Bezos about something, and I wanted to talk about it because I think it's funny. Yes. Uh, but this article is from GameSpot by George Yang. Um, this one says Pokemon and Xbox are both getting jewelry. Oh, I didn't know about one Pokemon. of yeah, one of them is incredibly expensive. The other, not so much. Is Xbox the expensive? Excuse one? me. No, Pokemon, what? surely. Xbox, this was really Just expensive. you wait. Okay. Um, both Pokemon and Xbox 
hello. It just took me to a different article. I didn't <laughs> click on anything. Um, both Pokemon and Xbox brands are getting official jewellery, although they will be handled by completely different companies. Tiffany & Co. is creating a line of Pokemon necklaces in a collaboration with the artist Daniel Arsham. Each separate piece has a Pokemon pendant dangling at the end. The six Pokemon featured on the pendants are Pikachu, Charmander, Squirtle, Jigglypuff, Cubone, and Mew. Um, Good strong line up there. Or oh, Bulbasaur. Yeah. Cubone's a strange choice, yeah. given the other yeah. choices. The dead mother one. Yeah. yeah that's what I want um, to wear. The Pikachu ones are special, as they are made of 18 karat yellow gold. The small ones yellow cost gold. about, how much do they think it costs? The, this is the small one. Small 18 karat gold. 18 karat gold. gold. $200. Uh, £300. Pounds. $9,900. Oh, what? The larger Pikachu oh, one. The larger one. Is about how much I think it's going to cost? 12 grand. Uh, two for 15. 29,000. No. 29,000. <laughs> Who yeah. is this for? I'd like <laughs> to see the scalpers rushing and get these ones. Yeah. yeah. The other Pokemon are made in sterling silver and cost. A grand. Uh,. Three thousand, one thousand two hundred ninety okay. pounds each, or dollars. That's sorry. still too many. They will yeah. all go on sale on the first of December at Tiffany and Co. Landmark in New York and the Omo Tesando store in Tokyo. Um, they will also be available for purchase online. Alternatively, you can steal Serge them. Denim, Serge Denims or Serge Denims is collaborating with Xbox. Now these are actually different jewelry than we thought where they were. Oh. So or if you go on the Xbox store, they have a bunch of jewelry that are like. They've got like it's hilarious. knuckle Chunky dusters bling. type thing. And yeah, like, the knuckle dusters with yeah. the Xbox logo. And they're all like, an Xbox logo ring. Yeah, and a massive necklace. They're all huge and they're covered in like, I don't know if they're real crystals or yeah, not. Yeah, fake encrusted stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Serge Denims is collaborating with Xbox and the, the pieces are substantially cheaper. While also being more varied, there are rings, bracelets and necklaces. The pieces in this range and this line range from $80 to $145 and feature designs like the Xbox logo, the direction pad, controller and the AXBY buttons. Don't, don't wear these outside. No. And no. also, boys, don't wear them inside. Yeah. boys, do not get your girlfriend. Then. Your girlfriend doesn't want this. Right. I'm your, telling you your this. Your girlfriend does not want having this. Having looked at them, your girlfriend does not. She, she doesn't want this. Twenty nine thousand pounds. Pikachu. 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 Yeah. She does. That's the one she wants. Mm -hmm. The only one that I think looks nice is the silver control necklace, and that's because it's a circle. Right. These are the sorry. Yeah. These so are that's the, that's like the D pad, isn't it? Yeah. Icon. Yeah. Oh right. Or the yeah. texture. Buttons, it just then, doesn't look like a control. No. Uh, that's a but little even then you're sol you're just solving a problem of how do I wear Xbox jewelry without people yeah. knowing what yeah. just don't yeah. wear Xbox jewelry. No. And also they've got this one called silver stud ring that's just like that. Right. And I don't quite know what that's got to do with Xbox. No. Because they also have silver stud necklace. See, sort of or like necklace, as I, this girl on TikTok says, and I like. Mentioning. It looks a bit like an X, I suppose. Oh, I guess. I understand yeah, if someone maybe. wanted, uh, someone wanted like a a little little necklace with a Pikachu on it or something. Mm, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, I understand that. You know, that's cute, but <laughs> the Xbox logo says, on a ring yeah, is is mad. So the the silver stud ring is a slim band ring with an infamous with the infamous stud texture. Right. If that the infamous, infamous, eh? infamous stud. The texture. stud design is inspired by the 2000s nostalgia, that decade that the first Xbox was launched. Oh, what? Because people wore studs in the in the I 2000s. guess they the stud shape also death. forms <laughs> yeah forms a subtle X shape, another gentle nod to the gaming collaboration. Just a gentle nod. While still being wearable so without giving subtle. obvious gaming not. not Connotations. Just don't wear Xbox jewelry then. Also, like, it's not even. It You'll doesn't fool give everyone. Obvious... Just don't do it. <laughs> that's like saying, "Oh, I'm wearing a, a ring that's gold because I like Lord of the Rings." Like, like you can't even tell that's Ashton, Xbox. It's a gentle nod to Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's very subtle. That's horrible. That, that, what is that? Silver spiral ring. It's not even centered and no. not not Xbox related. I no. wouldn't say. Bloody hell! I'm gonna I'm see someone wearing. wearing these, and I'm gonna be like. If you buy one of these, please let us know. Oh, yeah. Because we want, we I want to I better look good on you. Yeah, I bet it'll look great on you. And your please girlfriend will love it. Your girlfriend. your girlfriend will love it. Yeah. Or boyfriend. Uh, or boyfriend. Or, or boyfriend. Yeah, sure. A boyfriend some... might like it. No, he won't. I think he'd, I think he'd <laughs> no rather I think he'd rather the, a gift card for the Xbox store of, yeah. a, of a similar current uh, value. Yeah. I've got some weird news. Okay. 
This comes courtesy of Jonathan Wong on Facebook and Stephen Skolez on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an article from Kotaku written by Levi Winslow. Oh, sorry. Before you start, I should yes. say the Tiffany & Co. Pikachu collabor oh, Pokemon collaboration. It gets worse. The box, the Tiffany & Co. boxes are like blue and yeah. like suede. And if you buy your £29,000 um, <laughs> necklace, it comes in a blue suede Pokeball. Oh, that's... Um, so worth it. So worth it. <laughs> Brilliant. I wonder how much they'll be worth... Like later, when for like as collectibles in like thirty Nothing. years or something, mm. you know, if the if the price now is twenty nine grand, I don't will they go up in price or down? Well, it's Tiffany and Co. So you wonder if the if the the general jewelry, even if it's just a Pokemon thing, would go up, but because it's a limited collaboration, maybe it will be even more. And Tiffany collectors might want them as they well. Might. A Tiffany, a jewelry collector is a thing. I suppose absolutely. Probably. absolutely. People yeah. with too much money will definitely yeah, be that's doing mental. That. I do actually have a piece of um of gaming related jewelry. I suppose technically which are PlayStation cufflinks, mm. which were gifts because I Those was... Those are kind of cool, though. Yeah, well, and they were functional as well because I was... Um, what was I? An usher. Are they official? Um, I, yes. Nice. They, it was just some... Yeah, I, I don't imagine they were too expensive either. Mm -hmm. They're not like sterling silver or anything. Yeah. But they were they were given to me and uh, the other usher at my uh, one of my friend's wedding. Cute. So we, we wore them because we all play games together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that served a very specific function. However, I draw the line. I, d I know it's contentious, but I draw the line at 9,000 tiny Pikachu necklace. Yeah. <laughs> I, I won't. Agreed. You can try all you want, but mm -hmm. I won't. Sorry, carry on. A college professor uses Tears of the Kingdom to teach an engineering class. Oh. The University of Maryland is leveraging the hero like the of cookies. the- hmm? Like the cookies. Just yeah. like the cookies. <laughs> it was named after the cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Old Maryland chicken, just like in this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, leveraging the hero of the world's new rune abilities to get students into machine design and robotics. Link's new abilities in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom let you construct all kinds of constructions from functional computers to uh, flamethrowing dicks. Thanks to these <laughs> building powers, a college professor is using Totka's mechanics and physics engine to teach students uh, a bit about engineering and robotics. Mm. Spotted on the Nintendo Switch subreddit, Ryan Sokol... So... Sochol... Ryan Sokol... <laughs> person... <laughs> The yeah. University of Maryland's uh, Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Director of the Bio-Inspired Advanced Manufacturing Laboratory, uh, uh, wow. abbreviated as BAM, <laughs> is using Nintendo's popular open-world action-adventure game to advance students' knowledge with machine construction and design. As so-called outlined in a <laughs> November 12th YouTube video, the class The Legend of Zelda A Link to Machine Design will leverage various aspects of the game, from its physics to its rune abilities like Fuse and Ultra Hand to give mechanical engineering students a window into the world of robotics. It's actually pretty sick. It says. I hope it's actually when pretty these guys sick. Have, or girls have graduated <laughs> and they're in the out in the field, they'll just be like in a workshop somewhere going, Fuse! <laughs> Fuse! <laughs> Ultra Hand! Why is it not working? Yeah. What surprised me as I was playing through Tears of the Kingdom was the unexpected emphasis on machine design and engineering, so called, said in the video. <laughs> So the game includes a number of different types of machine elements like rockets, motorized wheels, and propellers. And what's interesting is that each of these different machine elements uses energy differently. It, it then continues to talk about how right. Tears of the Kingdom works. Game works. Yeah. But if you go to BAM, you could be Playing taught Tears by a so-called teacher <laughs> who will tell you all about Tears of the Kingdom and how it applies to real life. And that's wow. cool, isn't it? That's it is fun. cool. I would have loved to have played video games at school. Me too. Yeah. <sighs> You could have learned all about the we were Vikings born in the wrong generation. Creed. Now I just play them at work instead yeah. and yeah. get paid. And they, I think it's like God. part of the actual national syllabus in um, like the Netherlands or something. Minecraft, isn't it? I think. Yeah, Minecraft is mm. is yeah, it's a phenomenal tool. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that was weird news. Thank you everybody for submitting your weird news. Mm. It's time now for the big discussion. Oh. It's big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion this week. It comes courtesy of Robert Goulding, brother mm. of Ellie. Hello there, Bat. <laughs> They've only gone and done it. The Last of Us Part 2 is being remastered after three and... Oh, after... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do three first. After three, then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not in the wrong order. It's being remastered after three and a half years. However, in an interesting twist, there are rumours that the remaster was worked on by new hires at Naughty Dog while the main production team are working on an original title. Firstly, how do you feel about the remaster happening at all? And secondly, do you feel... Do you feel the use... 
Do you feel the use new? Do you feel the use? I assume of oh. new hires is a positive sign for Naughty Dog in terms of increased output in the future. Much love, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Uh, I've got a couple of write-ups here. First from Push Square. Officially titled The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, this PS5 re-release will boast a host of graphical improvements, 4K resolution in fidelity mode, improved load times, and full dual sense controller functionality. All the stuff you'd expect then, but this remaster apparently takes things further. The product description, I say apparently, this is, um, Push Square's write-up was a bit confusing because they were reporting on the leaks and then right. they were updating the story at right, the top. Yeah. So this is from further down in the article before it was confirmed. Um, the, you're right. Yeah. The product description describes No Return, a roguelike survival mode in which you choose your path through a series of randomized encounters. It continues, play as a host of different unlockable characters, some never before playable in the Last of Us franchise, each with unique gameplay traits. The variety of challenges feature different foes and memorable locations from throughout part two, all culminating in tense boss battles. There's more, though. Lost levels will also be included, Included, sorry, allowing you to explore early development versions of three new levels not seen in the original. Loads of developer commentary is bundled in as well, and there's even a new guitar free play, free play mode where you can unlock additional instruments. The game launches on the 19th of January, and you'll be able to upgrade to the remaster for $10. This falls in line with Sony's previous upgrade paths for titles like Ghosts of Tsushima, and what's more, you can transfer your save data from the PS4 version as well. I've got another write-up from X fire according to a report by vgc's jordan midler which i couldn't actually find which is why i've got someone else reporting on that report right. <laughs> the remastered version of the last of us part 2 is primarily a project for new hires at naughty dog this strategy serves as an introductory phase for fresh talent so uh, to acquaint themselves with its game development process this approach aligns with the industry norm where remasters and ports often serve as the training grounds for new developers it allows them to hone their skills on existing frameworks before moving on to more ambitious original projects peter well, um, cynically, I, I wonder like whether all of this new stuff has been put in kind of as a not as an afterthought or such, but as a perhaps a reaction to um, people being like, why is this happening? This does not need to happen because my before we knew anything about the, the details and we just there were rumors that this was going to be happening. I was very much thinking like there does not need to be a remaster of this game. It looks great. It plays great. Um, they've only just you know, done the first game to kind of match the way that the second one works. So why would you then need to do anything to the second one? And, you know, you don't want to change it too much if you want that, like, cohesive part one, part two. Um, but I do quite like the sound of all of the new stuff they're throwing in there. And given that they are saying you will be able to upgrade for a small fee rather than them just trying to flog just a, a new version of the game, or, you know, yeah. a barely unlike new version the remake. of the game. Yeah. Mm. Unlike the remake of the first one. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So um, that was kind of nice to hear, relatively speaking. It was, you know, uh, it, it's a more appealing kind of um, prospect to me now as a game. Um, but for the second part of the question, do you feel the use of new hires is a positive sign uh, for Naughty Dog in terms of increased output? I mean, I don't know necessarily how long they've been doing this anyway. Um it, they're certainly reporting about it now, but uh, who's to say that there weren't new hires working on uh, on part one? I don't know if this is like specifically being reported like as a, like a new policy, yeah, yeah a, a new a new way of doing things. But you know, it, it sounds like a good thing, and uh, the fact that there is this rumored other project happening uh, with the main team that that's uh, that's exciting because I, I think it's been. It's been a while since we've had something properly fresh from Naughty Dog. Um, and they're one of my, or they certainly have been one of my favorite studios in recent years. Um, so, I mean, I'm excited. I'll be interested to see how this comes out. Um, and uh, I, I only hope that, you know, my, my one concern is like, if they are using new hires on this, that that doesn't in some way affect how people respond to this project. Mm -hmm. And, you know, either try and point the finger if it's not very good or, you know, I just, I don't like the video gaming community, especially when it comes to The Last of Us. People are like kind of, kind of a little bit, a little bit toxic. Uh, toxic maybe is the word. Yeah, I was going to use a, a swear word beginning with S and ending in Y. Um, but uh, yeah, they're... Slutty. It, <laughs> no, S, S H. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's it's not the best community, I would say, mm. and uh, I only I'm just 
I'm scared for these new boys and girls um, mm. for yeah. what the reaction might be to this project that they're working on. But it's exciting. Speaking of the community, yeah, I asked them what they thought Those on our slutty. <laughs> yeah, um, and I won't read you the comments because most of them were a bit mean. So this is on and YouTube specifically, toxic. and yeah. uh, it's like Bizarro World over there. It is. It's, it it's is. home of some lovely people, but mostly it just mm -hmm. pulls out the worst people imaginable. Yeah. yeah, but it reaffirmed a few things that I was thinking um, in terms of like generally the consensus was, no, I'm not going to buy that unless it's cheap. And then someone was like, it is cheap. And they're like, oh, maybe I will buy it yeah. then. Okay, um, have a good day. Yeah, the general consensus was that, that no one wanted to pay full price for it. Yeah. Um, so the idea of the £10 upgrade was welcomed um but also one of the other things that i think is what is currently happening um i think that naughty dog are ruining their own reputation mm -hmm. i think they have put out too many remasters and remakes over the last few years and people are tired of not having anything new from mm. Naughty Dog. Um, a lot, there was someone in the comments fighting for their life, trying to convince people that just because they're making this doesn't mean they're not making any other games. People can do two things at once um, and trying to reaffirm in everyone's mind that Naughty Dog is still the great studio that we, we know and love. But I think Naughty Dog have tarnished their own reputation with the, what they've been doing the last few years i think it started when they announced the remaster or the remake sorry of um part one part one mm. and i think that then doing the uncharted remasters and then doing this i think people are sick of thinking that naughty dog only want to get more money from them for games that they've already paid for um this game came out three years ago and i think it is silly and i think they've made a mistake calling it a remaster i think they should have just called it like the last of us part 2 ps5 upgrade said it gets a bunch of new games a bunch of new like content that's why we're charging money for it if you've not got it on ps5 you can buy the ps5 version it will have the extra content on it i think that they've made a mistake calling it a remaster because i think people are starting to associate that word with naughty dog and that is not good for them. Yeah. I think that they have made a mistake um, in what they've been doing in the last few years. I think had they done this, but then between this and the last remake that they made, released something brand new yeah. or released a new game that wasn't just a remaster or a remake, people wouldn't be feeling quite as angry about this as they are. The Last of Us Part Two already didn't go down particularly well regardless from the the fan base even though it was definitely not as bad as everyone was kicking off it like about it being but i do think that they're ruining their own reputation and i i really hope that the next thing we hear from naughty dog is a brand new game i think i don't even really care about the last of us factions I think no, they need to know. move on and need to make something new. They could have, you're right, they could have released all of that extra stuff that they're now talking about and just called it some kind of DLC or like, yeah, you know. like the director's cut yeah, or whatever. Exactly, like, yeah. if you call it that, people are more willing to accept it because it's additional content. You call it a remaster, people see remaster and they and think it's just the same game yeah. again, but you're just charging me more money for it. So I think they've made a mistake with that. In terms of the new hire thing, I very much agree with Peter in the sense of like, it's great and I'm glad that they're doing it but i worry that if it's something that people don't like then all of these new hires which people find out who they are and they find their twitter accounts and they harass them online or whatever mm -hmm. um i worry for them and i hope that this goes down well upon release so that these new hires can be hopefully not sacked from naughty dog early on yeah. but yeah that's what that's what i think about this whole situation and I'm, i will not be buying the upgrade i'm not really that bothered mm -hmm. Naughty Dog, uh, it seems, can do no right, according to the internet. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, It just seems that, and you're right in that they may have built this reputation for themselves, but certainly it started from a, from a, a handful of very unpleasant people mm -hmm. to begin with. And it's sort of the, the snowball has picked up momentum as it's continued to roll downhill over these past few years. But... I really do think that the the furor and the outrage over this is massively overblown about this remaster. I think yeah. it's it's it I'm honestly amazed they didn't do it sooner because The Last of Us, the first Last of Us got a remaster on PS4 almost immediately. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. And admittedly, yeah. there was no backwards compatibility, so there is a difference there. Um 
But you know, th this I think it makes perfect sense to to, to release a 4K version of this game. Yeah, uh, it it makes perfect sense to me. My only well, what's several of my issues with it? The caveats are that. It shouldn't be seventy pounds. Yeah, it mm. absolutely shouldn't be ten ten dollar upgrade path. Fantastic. That's that is a must. You cannot not have that. Uh, so it shouldn't be seventy dollars. And also, there's the fact that there was already a compatibility patch for PS5 that's been released, which they've done with other stuff, which mm -hmm. admittedly doesn't make it run in 4K or add any of these modes to it, but does make it run at sixty frames and does various other things to make it run better on PS5. So realistically, if you have the PS4 version, you could have played it on PS5 already and had mm -hmm. a fantastic time. However, as I said, I, I, I really do think that, it, and it may be down to this reputation, but people are just given anything they do, all of the hate in the world. And, and I, I don't think it's justified. I don't think it's justified, but I do understand why. I understand where it's coming from. It. Yeah, absolutely. I understand people where it's being coming from. A bit too. Toxic. But people, people are so like anything they announce, anything they do, yeah. any tweet that goes out, it's like it's just harassment, and mm, and yeah. I and I think it's it's it completely out of hand. Too, and yeah. even though this may not be for everyone, if any other studio announced this, they wouldn't be fussed. It's Naughty Dog has a very special reputation, I don't and know. it's such. I think it's such a shame. Yeah, and and. While I personally would like to play The Last of Us Part Two again, and I've been looking for an excuse to do that, so I may well do the $10 upgrade. Mm. I'm in no rush to do it. I think it makes perfect sense in terms of the TV shows coming out and people who want to play through the games for the first time. They have a PS5. They can buy The Last of Us Part One remake. Mm -hmm. They can buy this remastered version. You can bundle them together. We were talking about this ages ago when the, when the remake was announced about how obviously they want them together in the yeah. same box. So this was inevitable. This is not surprising. We did say how long is it going to be until we get a rem remaster for this one and it turns out about four months. Four yeah. months. <laughs> I mean it's not a... <laughs> when Kat was uh, Kat and Kieran were talking about it in our, in our group chat. They were like, no one wants this. And I was like, well... I mean, I, I kind of want it. And also, at, at least it's not a remake. However, I appreciate fully how weak of a defense that is. Mm. That at least it's not a remake is no defense at all. Uh, I don't I'm, think there's any any argument to say no one wants it just in and of itself. No. If someone that had come along and said, here it is for free, everyone, well, not everyone would have played it, but no one would have anything to say about it. But you're right, it's the price tag. And I think now yeah. that they've said, we are not going to just resell this to you for £70. That makes all the difference. It really does. And mm -hmm. in terms of the new hire stuff, I, I agree with you guys. And I, I completely agree with you, Ashton, in regards to the fact that I think Naughty Dog's reputation has taken a pounding both through this just just unending wave of like negative reaction to everything they do online, but yeah. also because... We haven't had anything from them in a while, and all they've done is remasters and remakes. And between, like the fact that there may have been new hires working on this negates this concern a little bit for me. Mm. But the fact that we had a remake that was that everyone was really cross about, we've had remasters that people aren't fussed about. There's the flipping factions debacle yeah. going on behind the scenes. It's like what what is going on? at that studio, do we need to be concerned? Are they working on something they can show us? Well, we said a little while ago, when we were talking about like, what publishers and developers do you trust? And we, I think all of us said, well, we have never been let down by Naughty Dog. Like mm. we, we've, we trust them. But the more I see from them, and this is not even to do with the negative backlash, because I don't read into that very much. It's just, I feel like from how they've been pumping stuff out the last few years, that I just don't know, like you say, what they're doing. I'm mm -hmm. so confused by them. They're a studio that have a famously very good like track record. Yeah. And it all it feels like is they're just asking for more money all the time. I think that also comes from the remake being £70 um, and having you'd have to rebuy the whole game again, even if you've got it on PlayStation 4 or whatever, you have to pay, play for the whole game again. And like people say, well, it takes, it's different. It's a remake. It's not a remaster. And I understand that. However, it's, a, it's one of those things where I still just, I feel scorned by that. I mm. feel annoyed by what they did with that. And then seeing remaster, as soon as I saw it, I very much had the same reaction, I think, that Kat and Kieran did mm -hmm. in the sense of like, why are they doing this? Yeah. Why are we having to get the same game again from them? 
when it's been like no time at all. Like yeah, we were talking yeah. earlier about games that we need 20 years ago that we'd love a remake for. And yet we're getting games and I know it's completely different, but from face value, it's like this game's three years old. Why are we getting a remaster for it? Mm, and I think yeah. it, it all comes down to the name. That's all I think of. If they hadn't have put remastered, yeah. if they'd have changed the name, director's cut or mm. whatever, that I think it would have been a completely different reaction. But I still think people would have been like, why are we getting this game again? Why are we not getting something new from you? It and is. I think that's what they need to do. Yeah. It's weird being in a position where you don't actually know what they're working on other than yeah. this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you look at someone like Rockstar who have also done their fair share of remakes, remasters. Yeah. Re-releases. Uh, or re-releases. Uh, here's GTA on 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 a toaster. You know, <laughs> yeah. so it's like yeah. the Skyrim joke almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone knew, even though it wasn't officially announced for a very long time, they're working on GTA 6. We all yeah. know that that's what they're doing. Naughty Dog, I mean, everyone would like to think they're eventually going to be bringing something out and there's mm. this rumored original project, but no one actually knows for sure yeah. what yeah. they're doing or if they're doing anything. Well, what have we? What have they announced since The Last of Us Part 2? That they were working on factions. Yeah, well, yeah. Then they announced that they were doing the Uncharted... Was it Thief's Legacy? Uh, Legacy of Thieves or Legacy something. of Thieves, yeah. 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 Those were the next two things they were working on. Mm -hmm. And then we saw Uncharted Thieves Legacy, but those weren't new games. Those were yep. remasters yeah. or remakes, sorry. Oh, I don't actually know which one they were. And then we heard Factions is delayed. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't know when that's coming. Oh, but we're making a Last of Us Part 1 rem remake. So that's coming out soon. That's now out. Still haven't heard about factions really. All we know is it's in some kind of development hell. Yeah, yeah. it's and all just been remakes, remasters, exactly. and factions. And is this a is the problem. This is why I'm so upset with the situation because I know Naughty Dog can do great things, mm -hmm. and I just haven't seen it from them in the last like four years. And yeah. I just feel like they need to gain favor and mm. they need to try something new and mm. we need to see something new. We just need them. to know what they're working on. I yeah, guess, more than, what more than anything yeah. else. I've, honestly, I don't think they're. I'm struggling to think of a studio that is more polarizing in that it seems everyone has their mind made up about Naughty Dog. You mention Naughty Dog and people will either be furious mm. or they'll be trying to defend them right out of the gate. Because they, I don't know how, I mean, I kind of do know how we got into this position, but they're just, they're just like, even this conversation we're having now is going to piss loads of people off yeah. because it's about Naughty Dog. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know why. Like, mm. it's crazy. And so that's why I'm, I know I'm playing devil. I am. I want to make it clear. I'm playing devil's devil's advocate to an extent in terms of saying the remaster isn't such a bad thing, because I've offered up my own criticism yeah. of the remaster. I don't think it's but a I'm bad also, thing. I'm also I'm also very hesitant to like pile on because mm -hmm. that just seems to be the only only way a conversation about yeah. Naughty Dog goes on the internet. Yeah, and I'm kind of tired of it. And I do think you're right. You're every point you've made is bang on. I I think any any glimmer of hope, any <laughs> sign of anything new they're making would would change the conversation. But yeah. then they've yeah. got this huge uphill battle because they've just got these entrenched masses who just just want to see them fail, I think, really. And even the new yeah. thing, although there'll be no basis, you know, at, at least if you hate The Last of Us because it's got women in it or, like, women Lesbians. Did, did kisses, mm. then that's that's terrible. So if, if they came out of nowhere and said, hey, we're doing a third Last of Us, people would, on the basis of part two pile on and say, well, we hate The Last of Us because it's got lesbians in it or whatever. Mm. But even this new original project, I think people will still just, dis that that those people, I mean, yeah. will decide to just hate on that before they've even seen yeah. what it is but it for those reasons. Those who defend Naughty Dog a little bit of ammunition. Because yeah. right now, like reading the comments of this community post, mm. there was just one account that just kept popping up and was, like I say, fighting for their goddamn life, trying to defend Naughty Dog. And everyone just kept rebuttaling with, but what have they done recently? Well, what mm. have they, and then some of them are like, well, they might be working on something new. And if they just had that thing if of like, say, look, yeah. this, look, this little <laughs> seedling, this is what they're working on, yeah. please. They have that. And I, I do think they'll get piled on with various things because there is this toxic like well, I don't know what the word I'm thinking of is begins with an F but I can't find it there's this toxic cloud around uh, Nint oh my god Naughty Dog mm. that um, I think will take a while to get rid of but at least 
there should be some glimmer of light that was trying to yeah. break through what the cloud. We need and right now there isn't. Is an is an actual PlayStation showcase yeah. that tells us what their first parties are working on because we don't know bloody anything apart from those two horrible looking live service games. Yeah. And that's, that's it. true actually. That's it. It's 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 time to tell us what you're working on. And we might get something at the James Awards. Sorry. Yeah. The get the game award. <laughs> Wolverine. Um, yeah, we might see some more. Wal- oh, Wolverine's pretty much will. the only thing that we know about, at least. But we I'm need... not saying we'll say gameplay. No, I don't think... Just say, I hey, think... still making it. Yeah. We're still making that. Mm. But yeah, like we we just don't know what's happening. And uh, that that is also part of the problem with it Naughty It does feel a little bit like you maybe... Maybe the problem lies with Sony. Because it, it could be that yeah. Sony's telling them to make these games. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not being funny. It might not be Naughty Dog's fault. But it does <laughs> feel like play- maybe the, the issue is lying with PlayStation at this point. Because like you say, we've had such mediocre uh, like shows Yeah, there's uh, been recently, no communication. Really. And we've, we've got no games from them on the horizon. Like we... Last year, I feel like we had... We knew games were coming out this year ahead of time and we knew what we were looking forward to. But it does feel like now I can't think of a single like PlayStation exclusive or like can't wait for a Sony studio project. It feels like they've they've worn them all out and we don't know what we're working on. They've all come out now. Yeah. They've all come out. We don't we don't don't know what's coming. I don't really know what's coming out from Xbox either at the moment. I think we're at the point in the year where we're kind of like, what's happening? And it does feel like we're being left a little bit in the dark Mm. with a lot of things. Xbox do have a few that we like fable and stuff like that. This is true. Like long gestating things. But PlayStation well, I tell you one thing that is coming out. The Last of Us Part Two remaster. Yeah, that is coming out. And you can get that next January uh, for seventy dollars. Um you know, as I said, or ten dollars, uh, or ten dollars. That's the thing. Or ten dollars. <laughs> uh, at some point, I might pay the ten dollars. It sounds like there's some cool features in there. Yeah, I yeah. would like to play it again. 4K, looking pretty. I'll I'll give it another go. Get emotionally devastated all again. over again. Yeah, no, yeah, it's no so, that's the thing. It takes it so plays much out so of you. well. Yeah. It was such a as a game. It was such an enjoyable experience. As a story in a world, it's it was just terrible. Awful. <laughs> yeah, it just tore me. To Every pieces. time I've been like, oh, I've got to play Last of Us Part Two again. I've been like, but I'm happy today. Yeah, yeah I don't want to play be. on mute. Or I'm like, yeah. <laughs> or I'm like a bit sad, and I'm like, Skip I just I can't team. take it. Like I just I need yeah. to, I don't know what the right mood to be in to play a Last of Us game is, but I've just not been in that mood for a while. Interesting thing that I saw someone raise is that it's. Uh, the roguelike, they've no, there's no mention of multiplayer. And given that they're working on multiplayer stuff, mm. there could well have been scope for like a co-op roguelike yeah. experience there. A bit like uh, Returnal out of that mm. stuff. Mm. So, Well, have you heard that seem- we're not talking Sony first party anymore, but that Wonder Woman is apparently going to be just a single player superhero yes, game. Yes, they have not confirmed that now. So yeah. that appears to be, hopefully that's a growing trend where even people mm. who have been dabbling in life service. They know it doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't work. It's not what people want. <laughs> but is this what you want? Mm. Remember, try, please try to remember. Hey. It's just video games, yeah. mm. and uh, and don't bite each other's heads. Off. I mean, you've already done it. We can see the yeah. bodies without heads on yeah, the floor yeah. already. But uh, do not try and have sm- some nice discourse. A smile on your face when you finish writing your comment. How about don't post it? Yeah, don't post it. That's How a really about, good rule. Ashton. Like if I you've like not that. smiled your way through writing a comment, maybe you don't need to post Why it. Why don't you go for an angry cycle? It works wonders. Such a good point. You could help. You could get all the way to London. <laughs> You'll get home so fast <laughs> on the fuel of being angry at Naughty Dog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, do let us know what you thought of what we discussed today. Try and keep it civil. Don't be a, a prick. <laughs> uh, there's a few places you can find us on the internet if you want to get in touch. We're making videos at youtube.com forward slash team triple jump and we are streaming on twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump. And hey, if you've got Amazon Prime, you are already paying for a Twitch sub. You might not know it, but you are. So you can redeem that on us at no extra cost on top of your Amazon Prime and you get all the benefits of being a subscriber without paying anything extra. You're still paying money, but it's not. Anything. You're already paying for <laughs> You're it. You're already paying for it. Yeah. You might as well use it. Exactly. Uh, we have a Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram account on which we are all at Team Triple Jump. And we also have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump, for all kinds of exclusive stuff. Triple J dot MUP. That's Triple J U dot MP is our website there. You'll find links to everything that we do. And why not leave a five star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. And we really appreciate it. It helps a lot. Mm. I had a look on Spotify. We've got a 4.9%. Uh, 4.9%. Nice. We've got 4.9 yeah. <laughs> stars, which means some of you didn't leave five stars. And hey. that's, uh, but you that's know, okay. You've got to go top it up. You've not got up. a smile on your face by the time you finish <laughs> Don't writing Don't leave this. a review. 
<laughs> well, they might just be pleased that they're review bombing us. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Smile. Yeah. That'll, that'll I don't be know a big victory. 4.9 star is review bomb. No, but I mean, like but... one person might have given us one yeah. star. Yeah. You talked because about we said women. We uh... <laughs> said something nice about The Last of Us. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's crazy. What a world. Um, just enjoy your video games. Yeah. Please just yeah. enjoy your video games. Uh, just enough time to talk about this week's sponsor again, which is, of course, the James Awards, mm-hmm. uh, which are on the 7th of December, hosted by James J. James Lee um, and you can tune in live and vote for your favourite James James of the year we've got James Blunt James May King James the first and sixth uh, off of the 17th century yeah. and of course our very own James Jenkins please get your votes in soon mm-hmm. thank you so much for whistling whist- oh my god thank Christmas you so much the, the last sentence slash watching the last sentence <laughs> thank, thank you so much. much for listening slash watching everybody we will see you next time bye, bye. bye.